go. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Triangle of the Sun on Zoomcast. This is August 14th, 2016. We have a nice group together today. And we're going to be discussing some things that if you don't know about, you probably might get a little lost, but I'm going to put links to all of these where I embed this video so you can catch up on that and then the video will make more sense to you. So I don't have anything really totally planned, but I just want to review a little bit about this whole web of things that's, that's forming. Um, Again, this is from my Thothic perspective. A lot of things are going on on the planet. A lot of them I don't even know about. Most of them I guess I don't even know about. I just know about what's coming through here and a few other things. And so that's what I'm going to share with you. So we have some, some sounds coming in still. If everyone would please turn off their microphones. <laughs> Kailasa, turn off your microphone. Yes. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's a girl. Um, so I just want to review just very briefly, you know, it kind of all started this big roll of things for me, for what I'm receiving. Started um, on May 29th, you know, when we had the, the opening of the three paths that link from the mother's milk, the mother universe to our universe, allowing us to receive more light codes, frequencies, Ultra, ultra beings coming through that that were not until that portal opened or that passage opened, but it's connected to all the portals of the world, at least most of them, I do believe. And um, so it allowed things to really sort of pick up and, and, and experience. And then, you know, we had this thing about the waveform of the queen of the sun coming in. The king of the sun waveform had been on the planet for a few years, and now the queen of the sun is coming in. In fact, in... I would say today, or, you know, time is linear, so it's kind of hard to say, but it's here somewhere. <laughs> and as the queen and the king merge, you know, not merge, but dance together, they form this, this synergy of waveforms. I'm going to dare use my hands in, in that path. And um, so that happened. And then, uh, well, a few other things too, but then we have this Isle of the Sun uh, that's connected to... Um, Rapa Nui or Easter Island that is forming and um, it is like a little bubble of energy of space of place I don't know if space is the right word but place that is sort of floating just above the sea uh, connected to Rapa Nui how far out I don't know but you can kind of just visualize it floating along there and it is not in an entirely separate dimension from ours it's kind of in an a pseudo dimension is just a little off just a little off it's like you could almost see it <laughs> but not quite you know and I anticipate that people will begin to see it or see little sparkles or something going on uh, because I feel that what from both tells me that it is uh, so close to us it's you know going to become more and more present but even without the visuals we will be able to enter and work through it. What is it? It is a zone, a state that is being planted inside the pyramidus radius matrix that's, that can be planted now that the waveforms are together, the king and the queen of the sun. And um, it, as I said on the video, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, but um, it is where the certain ultra beings can work with us and the ones that assigned to this, the ones that have been called the guardians of the sun or sun island, but they had another name that <laughs> I don't have in front of me and I can't pronounce, so I'm not going to try to say it here. But um, it is a place for human beings now to really get down to work in, in integrating um, the, the pure gem body frequency. And actually, it's a staging ground not to integrate the pure gem body frequency, to be, but to create the mechanisms to integrate it. In other words, um, they're giving us the fishing pole instead of giving us the, the, fi the fish, you know? So uh, what they're helping us work with here is to be able to then turn around and use that as a platform to integrate and to build our pure gem bodies. Obviously, this has already been going on uh, the, the pure gem body aspect has been going on for some time, but um, at this point, 
it's like, okay, we're gearing up to the next stage. And the next stage means we have all these helpers coming in and they're coming in. We're not having to reach up, so to speak, highly in the ethers to, to receive it. And it's going to be closer to us. It's going to be in our realm almost and close enough that we can experience it more profoundly. And a lot of people who have not been able to experience things on a, uh, that kind of a level, uh, they want to, you know, but for some reason they can't, uh, they're going to start experiencing it as well because it's now open to receive um, us. And so we can really thank these wonderful beings that uh, have given up their day job to come <laughs> and be with us. You know, it's like they're going to really be in this and, and working intensely. And of course, I tease because they're probably a lot of places at once. But um, so then I received, of course, about, well, we have the Elix, uh, Elixis Mundi, which has involves the aerial packs, which is the Isis I dynamic I was given back in the 80s. That is the core of uh, creating portals and stargates and in, in portals in the body as well, not just in the, on the planet. And it's incorporated now in the Elixis Mundi, which is a whole light program that Osiris Rising is kind of working with. If we can get it going for people to go out to various sacred sites and things and, and, and start activating these, that now that the portals are receiving the mother's milk, will we'll bring a whole new level to meaning and level to portal activation on the planet. Uh, that's another thing, but it's very connected to this. Then we have, then we have the Osiri Corpus, and that is the actual project that's going on in the Isle of the Sun. And that is where they are really helping us to do what I said, to build these platforms for our light bodies. Um, and one of the main aspects of it, as I mentioned before, is the bringing in of these star embryo that have been, you know, um, created, male, female, engendered embryo in a, in a higher light form. And they're brought into this temple that is being established there on the Isle of the Sun, the Mother Sun. And from there, they will be activated and placed into childbearing females that have agreed to this. And some of them may have agreed on a high soul level and maybe not consciously, but they're not going to, it's non-evasive. All of this is totally into agreement and it's not implanting alien creatures. It is our birthright. It is who we are. These light embryos are who are our true genetic vine connects to. So this is us coming back to us and they're giving us a helping hand here so we don't have to wait another million years <laughs> linear time before we can get this going and so these in light embryo when when the females among the women of the world in dream time in in uh, vision experience whatever come into the temples there on the mother son they are then they're of childbearing age and they you know, have agreed to this on, on some level, they will receive the light embryo that's for them. And it will be linked to their genetic vine, their specific genetic vine. Of course, when we say genetic, we're I'm really saying perigenetic because it goes far beyond what our particular family line is in this lifetime, but the soul lineage of the whole incarnating faculty of our experiential being and on other worlds as well as this. So that's being brought to us. And that's one form it takes. Another form it takes for those that are not of childbearing age is that uh, we can also be host to birth children of these light forms on other levels of dimensions of the earth, you know, giving it as a seed into that dimension and uh, seeding those areas that will then flower back into the portals to us here. It's kind of hard to explain, but it's kind of a, a recycling of the energy. So, um, you know, one of us here who has no plans on having a physical child could still participate in um, 
receiving the codes that we can then send out onto other levels of experience and, and see, reseed, you know, and not just the codes. I should say more than codes. It's the actual um, template of the embryo. So we have, we have those two that, that, that are active. And let's see, the other is that I'm aware of at this time is that Kanzutite is that um, all of us, all of humanity is going to start receiving these higher light codes of the, of the embryo, whether we uh, are going to do anything with it or not. In other words, whether we're going to birth it here, birth it there, or none at all, just people, people are going to start receiving some of these codes that they can bring into their system. And as they do so, they're, they're just codes, but as they do so, it is going to begin to elevate as a whole the genetic frequency. Now, why is this so important? Well, it sounds pretty nifty for one thing, but other than that, why is it so important? Because if you look at the whole genetic manipulation engineering thing that we allowed to happen as a planetary experience some time ago, you know, in various stages, the Anunnaki as they call them and other stages where there was genetic manipulation for specific purposes that were not part of the light inscription of this planet. They came in and said, hey, this is a good place. Let's do it here, you know, and this is where they did what they did. And it, it's a little less simplistic than that. Hello, Blue Magi and somebody else down there. Hi. And so um, I'm going to ask everyone to turn their mics off until I until you start talking because it feeds back a lot. Um, completely forgot what I was saying. What was I saying, folks? Where was I? The Anunnaki. Um, oh, yes, right. You know, the, um, yeah. So we have all this genetic manipulation that was, and we won't go off on the path as to why and all of this, but it did happen. And, uh, and it's still happening. But, you know, we have these two places and these two points of expression in reality. And one is in the light. And I'm not going to say the other is in the dark. The other is in the void of ignorance or non-experience of, of, the, of, of the sublime. And we have these two points. And the point that is lacking has a narrow, narrow, narrow bandwidth. It's very magnetic very, very magnetic. And I was trying to figure out what this Archon business is because I wasn't familiar with it. And I read up on a little, little bit and whatever, but I went to Thoth and he said, it's not really what people assume that the Gnostics wanted to make it more of a, of a, a, a real physical bad place or bad beings that they could blame. And, you know, it doesn't work that way, but it is a magnetic cloud, so to speak. And it attracts uh, beings that work in that highly magnetic energy. So in the frame that we're looking at where um, this all genetic stuff is taking place and manipulation and all of that, it's very densely packed mag magnetism, but it's a very, it's a very narrow bandwidth. That's the good news because it doesn't, you can easily step out of it. If you can just align yourself with the heart frequency and get out of the fear and energy strong enough, bent, you're out because you don't have to, a long way to walk. It's just the magnetic energy you have to shift from. So this program of the mother son is to bring us into full frequency with the true paragenetic light programming that will allow us to recapture who we truly are. And the more we bring that genetic memory and consciousness and the actual living embryos into the experience and birthing them, the other's just going to go like this. It's going to, it's going to, it won't have a chance to survive because it's just too, really it's too feeble. It acts big, but it's really not. So, but this has to be done in order to, to disengage it or else that's where we would go because that's so strongly magnetic into our presence. So that's mainly what it's about. And it's to bring us back out of that. And it's not an oppositional force. It's doing its thing. And the thing it's doing is watering the garden, you know, and it's watering the garden and it's watering the garden and all these other things that are going on are just, you know, that's of the arid desert. 
And the more you water the garden, the more the garden grows. And it's as simple as that. You don't have to get out your knives and swords or your, your protective fields and try to stay away from all this stuff. You just keep watering the garden, you know, and that's how we get there. <laughs> so um, that's a capsule, encapsulation of everything. And what I wanted to do next, let me down so I can see, is... Oh, I want to show you this picture, and I think I can switch the uh, camera around. We're going to give that a try. Let me bring it up. Where did I put it? Oh, don't tell me I closed it. Where is it? Um, there it is. Okay, now I have to see if I've got to be able to bring the camera around, and I think there's a little thing to do it. Right. Share screen. Here it is. Share screen. Okay. Can you see it? The image? Okay. Um, I, I just did this to, to try to encapsulate and show the, um, the whole portal energy thing because we're creating this in our own bodies as well as the planet. And we have the Star of David, and inside it, we have the Areopax. That's basically what this is. And... Um, I wanted to read. Uh oh, now I have to drop, pull up my notes, and you'll see that on the screen too. Well, uh, I'm going to be. I'm going to go back. Let's see. Uh, how do I end it? Stop share. Okay. Uh, that that image that you just saw will be for portal members. I'll have it in the in the portal, so you can have it if you wish to work with it. Um, so now I need to pull up my notes for just a second because. I had something I wanted to read next. In the Pista Sophia book, that I finally have mine, that by J.J. Hurtock and, and Desiree Hurtock, that there are commentaries on it. Um, I wanted to read just this one more thing. Should have had a bookmark there, but I didn't. Just had the page. Well, here we are. So I'm reading from page 375 in the book. It's um, uh, the commentary reads, when song and faith are inseparable, the vibratory levels of song harmonize you with the light. To see the light is to hear the song. And so to hear the song is to see the light with all of its color elements. You'll notice the image I showed you had a lot of color in it and light. Eventually, these songs and colors are synthesized within you. Song and light can transform your body of flesh into a body of light. This is why the angels were always pictured with harps, because the light contains the perfect harmonics and resonance frequencies. Research that attempted to recreate these signals through mind over matter has followed us through the centuries even into recent times, and beginning in 1973, certain experiments were carried out to activate the gifts of supernature through music and high-frequency sounds, as evidenced through the work of Dr. Andrija, oh my gosh, who, who worked with children with superminds. And it goes on about that. Now, I also saw on the, on the Isle of the Sun these beautiful... Uh, stones, like the closest I can describe them is, I don't have, a, didn't bring up a picture here, but of Kalanish, the stones of Kalanish that are like this, you know, and they're just sort of thin, and, and they, and I saw that each one, if you, they were like being struck with, with energy, with light energy, and it was these beautiful light beams that would strike them, and when it struck them, the sounds would come out, these harmonies, beautiful, beautiful harmonies. And as that happened, also these colors would come out as well. And so I know that they are helping to build all of this in our in our earth, in the, in the pyramidus radius matrix that contains all the matrices, and in our bodies, and especially those of us coming into the dream time fields, working there with them, and of course, those who are becoming receiving the fetuses, my goodness, they're they're really going to be receiving 
those energy encodings from these beautiful geometries. And I also saw, oh, and you're going to love this, Sandy. I also saw people standing there, human beings, and they were like, you know, you could see their bodies and these, these tattoos of beautiful light were just flashing. You know how these, some of these little lizards, you know, they flash these different colors. The bodies were just, but these were beautiful, like we have in Second Life, these beautiful energy, and they were just flashing in all these different colors on the bodies. It was so beautiful. And I remember that way, 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 way back, and, and when I wrote Red Tree, or, you know, I was like, oh gosh, 24, 25 or something like that. And I received this about, I don't think it's in Red Tree, but I received some information on it somewhere those days. And that, that people in Lemuria had wore beautiful tattoos. And at the time I was thinking, you know, for me, tattoos at the time was like mom or something, you know, written on your chest. I was going, tattoos, you know, and I was like, no, no, no. And he said, no, 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 these are beautiful geometrics. And he said, they don't let, they can come and go. And he was trying to, well, it wasn't even so thin. It was the other beings I was working with. I never understood it. But now it was like, oh, yes, I understand what that means. So, you know, all of these beautiful things, it's like, why do we love beautiful things when we see them? you know, lights and colors and clothes and things that are beautiful and nature. Why do we like those things? Because they transmit the spiritual vibration of who we really are and what we can do with our own bodies. We don't need to go shopping. We just turn on the lights <laughs> and we have these beautiful adornments. And they're not just adornments. They're, they're signals. They're energies. I could literally feel the energies, that, you know, in these beings that, it was telling them things, but it was telling them things like song and music tells you things in the heart, you know, that kind of thing. It was, it was just gorgeous. Um, so also, and I, oh, there it is. There is, in, the, in this book, they talk about the Star of David a lot too, which of course is what Thoth had told me years ago was the main um, uh, geometric for the 4444 stargate the ascension ascension stargate portal and of course inside that is the area of packs but her talk has a picture of, that he had uh, created by martin malley for the academy of future science he calls it the symbolic shield of david i don't know if you can see that but there it is and um I think I read some of this in my other video, so I'm not going to do it here, but um, it's obviously very important to the whole program. And then I want to read to you, and then pretty soon here I'm going to stop reading and we'll all start talking, but I had one other thing that I felt was really important, and that's about the blood flower. Now, I received originally uh, the actual blood flower I received in probably 2009 or something, and, um, but in 1995, Tho said, when blood mixes in the various strains, types and races, factors are as a result of karmic selection. So the blood consciousness becomes diluted in its ancestral strength. It does embrace future patterns, but largely in an oratronic half light or incomplete geometry. However, when these same strains, types, race consciousness mix according to true Metatronic, full light entrainment, new and more finely resolved forms of the DNA geometry are created which maintain the ancestral memory and yet evolve it to a higher graduation upon the spiral of creation. Um, how does one enter the ancestral flow of the Metatron rather than the Oratron? Through living sacred presence as a heart-centered reality. And it goes on and on, but then, then more recently in 2004 or something, I wrote both has shown me how each pattern of six petals in the flower of life is energetically aligned to six petal pyramid bubble. The six flower bubble creates a combined harmonic that is the same as the tone harmonic of divine man, Adam Kadmon. The platelets in the human blood conform to the flower of life pattern when the blood is transformed into the aether. This aether blood is still blood as it performs a similar function in the refined body, this body of a high frequency light vibration. However, the flower of life is only one frozen moment in the messages of the blood as it moves into greater and greater parity with source. Thoth calls these aether blood patterns or blood language 
Tumi, that's T-U-M-I. The flower of life pattern is the first complete harmonic. From, from it are spun, it's not Tumi, it's I, I, Umi, I'm sorry, <clears throat> excuse me, choked on that, I, like the letter I, I-U-M-I, patterns of infinitum. Yet it is through the door of the flower of life that the infinite I, Tumi, is accessed. And so, um, Anything else here? So this Itumi blood factor is what we're seeing, I believe, mirrored on the bodies, or at least in part, that I saw mirrored on the bodies as the, as the tattoos were being, being flashing on and off. Um, at least in part, I believe that they were incorporating some of those, those blood consciousness vibrations. And these are things that we can draw into us. We don't have to be able to flash them on our chest, but we can draw into our being and assimilate them, you know, in meditation and in, in, in um, just spiritual calling of energies. I'm going to be doing a series of, of videos for my portal members that will take this further. Um, not so much informationally, but in, in activationally, activationally. So then um, there were other things here, but I want, don't want to take up all the time with me talking, but there's something about the Metatron and how important that is in this whole thing, moving from the Oratronic to the Metatronic, from the half light to the full light, of course, but Metatron is a gate of, and as a being, is the archangel as we call it. Um, and I, but I just, there's just too much to go into it here. Um, and then there's the gathering of the moon tribes. And um, I'm going to put these links at the bottom before I embed this video so that all of you can see them and others can see them better. Because if I went through all of this, you know, time would be up and I want all of us to be able to share. So I'm not going to do that. But essentially, the gathering of the moon tribe, is the females coming together and um, in a way that's beyond what we are understanding at this time. We're all attempting to do that, and there's nothing wrong with what we're doing, you know, it's wonderful, but we're just really acting out on the surface what is even more important for the female energy of the planet to move into, and this includes the female energy within the masculine, and it includes the balancing of the masculine with the female, all of these things, so it's not leaving anyone out. But because we're talking about women here of childbearing age, you know, receiving these light embryo, which I think is fantastic. I especially wanted to include this. And um, just a little bit. It is not just women connecting mystically in deeper spiritual attunement with one another. It is an actual alchemical union of women that comes from about when they share that mystically connected moment, when they are capable of viewing, being, and doing sudden uh, doing suddenly dives deeper and becomes a power of its own, like a scent being released from the inner sanctum of a flower opening to the sun. This is a natural and essential function of the divine feminine when it is incarnated in, in the female embodiment. And um, it goes on to say, even I quote here from a recent study, well, recent then, by UCLA study on friendship among women by Gail Berkowitz. And in it, she states, it seems that the hormone oxyton is released as part of this stress responses in a woman. It buffers the flight or fight response and encourages her to tend children and gather with other women instead. When she actually engages in this tending or befriending, studies suggest that more oxytocin is released, which further counters stress and produces a calming effect. This calming response does not occur in men, says Dr. Klein, because testosterone, which men produce in high levels when they're under stress, seems to reduce the effect of oxytocin. It's estrogen, she says, seems to enhance it. Well, I'm here to say that that is true on a scientific level at that, this time, perhaps, but, but things are changing because as more men develop their um, lost, uh, as more men develop the divine feminine aspect in their being, and uh, open to that, uh, this will start changing for them as well. And it already is, I believe, you know, but this is, and, ha and the females, you know, we help do that. We help by, by, by extending ourselves to the heart flower of the, the, the male dynamic and you know, opening it to love. And I'm not speaking of 
romantic partner love. That's wonderful, but that's not what I'm really talking about here specifically. But, you know, the, the opening of the love gate to, to, from the divine feminine to the male counterpart and saying, come on in, you know, just opening the gate and, and bringing that in because we've been very protective for many years because of what we went through on this planet with, you know, the whole male thing. But we have to realize that many of us were males and doing that to, you know, it, it's, a, it's a mixed bag. But now is the time to open the gate and say, we love you all and, and come into the flower, to the flower garden with us, you know. And this is going to bring that light and love and presence to all male aspects. And we cannot get there from here without them, you know, I might add. So we have to just bring all of that into one, one place and one heart consciousness. Okay. So that said... I'm going to open now for discussion, and how we how are we going to do this? Let's keep our microphones muted, and, mine, and I'm I'm going to leave mine open because I need to exchange with all of you. But everyone else, keep them closed until you wish to speak. When you wish to speak, go like this, and I will say and call upon you. And I think that would be the better way in, instead of us wondering if we're going to interrupt somebody, you know. So I'll just kind of be the moderator for that. But now is the time, so let's see those little fingers waving. You can ask questions, you can share, you can bring up new aspects that maybe had been addressed here, but you feel should be in brief, you know. Okay, we have JC. Yes, dear. Hi, hi. It's, it's Cindy. How are you? Oh, Cindy. Okay. Honey, you know, I can only see the top part of your glasses and the top of your head. <laughs> That's because I'm ironing. There you are. Yeah, Cindy. I'm such a good girl. Um, a couple of questions. One. Um, you know how we go into the, we've gone into the different races like the Hyperborean and the Eros and it, does that make sense? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. Are we considering this new genetic thing that's going to happen with the Isle of, of the Sun? Is that going to be a new, are we considering this a new race coming in? Well, that's a good question. That's a good question. And as you're speaking it, I'm seeing that actually many races are going to come out of it. But you know what? Um, the idea of race is going to be brought into a crucible where um, we engender different um, appearances at different times. You see, in the New Earth Star, uh, we can be... It's like, sort of like second life. You know, we can put on the yeah. skin, the body that we want at that time. And it's not just for appearance. It's for the genetic energies that it incorporates. Because each race on this planet is very valuable and contains a certain genetic uh, intelligence, you know. And that's why races are mixing and mixing more now because we're sharing those intelligences through the genetic vine. But also uh, we can share it through the paragenetic vine. So when we are embodying these embryos that are coming in, we're going to be embodying them in all different races that we already have on the planet. And they're going to be, you know, they're going to look like us. They're going to look like me. They're going to look like Unjung. They're going to look like Joanna. You know, they're going to look like Sandy. But, but uh, they're going to contain the ability to trigger this, um, this ability to mirror these other races. And on our planet, it's, it's not going to appear dramatically like all of a sudden somebody white turns black or black turns white. It doesn't mean that, but it means yeah. that they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna have the intelligence rate. They're going to be able to bring in the intelligence frequencies of the other races that they aren't incarnated in at that moment. And then they can they can spread them, you know, even more dramatically than they're being spread now. And that's really important because... Phil talks about the, we become the rainbow beings, you know, and we bring all of it together as one. And how are we going to look? Well, any way we want to, I think, you know, at that point. But right now, we're just, you know, we're bringing it in and we're, we're creating that rainbow race together. And it's very exciting. And I, that's one of the reasons I love living on, on in the islands in, in Hawaii, because you can see it. I mean, you've got like 60... Six, seven, eight, nine different races in one person. You know, I mean, that's kind of like uh, uh, where? Uh, it, oh, there you are, Trisha. That's like Trisha. She's got a whole bunch of mixes in one. You know, it's like so. Um, we're creating that energy. I'm sorry, that was a long answer to your question, but it, did it kind of answer it for you? Yeah. No, that was good. I have another one, um, and then I'll let up. You know, the Temple of um, 
Sekhmet has a temple on Easter Island. Yes, that's right. Uh huh. Yes. Does this, will she be incorporated into the Isle of the Mother? Well, you know, that's interesting oh. you would say that because just recently I came across that second, well, yesterday I came across the segment article that I had done and I thought, I need to do some videos on this. And all of a sudden I was just like really strong. And uh, I wasn't thinking about that, that, that she has one of her temples there. So I would say that there is a strong connection and corporation. What it exactly is at this moment, I don't know, but stay tuned. I'm pretty sure that's going to be coming up. Okay. Thank you. And um, I'd love to, the Osiris um, second video that you did. It was really great. I love the information on the Merkaba. Mm -hmm. It was really good. Oh, thank you. And, yeah, really good. And um, it, it's something really wonderful for every, all of us to incorporate and really, really oh. be. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Uh, yes, Tricia. I just wanted to add something really quickly. In in Hawaii, we call that mixing of all the races in cosmopolitan. Say it again. Cosmopolitan. That's the name that is when you have all the races. Cosmopolitan. All the, you know, all the, so it's like one of at least one of each of the yeah. The major major race, cosmopolitan. Oh wow! That's, I've heard the word, of course, but you think of it as some glitzy restaurant or something that you go to, or in Second Life when we go to Cosmopolitan. Yeah, now, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Okay, I'll have to get a both word to it for it too, though. We'll find out. Yes, Onjun. Onjun. Okay. Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can, dear. Okay. So when you talked about the light embryo, uh, it reminded me of this picture I took. Um, I think it was about six, seven years ago. I was in an ancient forest in Canada um, near Prince Edmonton. I'm not very really good at with names, but it's this really, really ancient, ancient forest and very pure vibrations. And there I took a photo of this uh, orb. Inside, you can actually see Fetus looking like beings showing. They look like twins. And the message I got was that the souls or some souls when they come in, especially when they come to the planet for the first time, because the vibration difference is so high, they needed to be embraced in a very, very pure environment for a while inside of this light, light vehicle like ore. And then they go into a um, mother's room that was pre-agreed upon. Ah. So that was a, they really reminded me of the picture. And if I can find it, I'll, I will share it with you. And you can really see some kind of like fetus looking beings inside of this light orb. Marvelous. Yeah. Well, you take so many incredible fairy pictures and stuff. Oh, they're just gorgeous. Yes, please do. In fact, if yes. you see that, I will, I, I will link it to yeah, right. the video. And so mm -hmm. you can see it there too when they listen to the yeah okay. Um, oh, and one, one more thing I want to mention. Yeah. Um, just this past week, it has been really the energy was so high, and I felt like I really went through a series of very intense activations. Uh -huh. And I was actually uh, read your Seven Miracles of Light, the article that you wrote. Oh yeah. Made, back <laughs> and in the, in the the sequence that you wrote the first sequence was was how to prepare your this, this light body or gem body the first one was open up or activate your rose rose lotus heart and the exercise that you gave it was the, the red rose turning to gold and then the white and that exact the color of the roses for the colors of the roses that I was were also received in um, 2012. So the ruby, a red rose, this white rose, a golden rose. So they exactly matched. So I was really excited to read that too. <laughs> oh, you know, there's a there's a Seven Miracles of Light video in the portal too. Um, yeah. But I think I'm going to redo it. I did it so many years ago, and I have new ideas for it, so I might redo it. But okay. yeah, the roses, I, 
you know, I had a I had a vision one time of all this field of nothing but blue roses. It was so so beautiful. And I've forgotten exactly what he said when I went to Thoth about it, but it had to do with uh, the blue rose was was that which. Uh, my kitties are acting up, sorry. The blue rose was that which, um, what was it? It opened the heart to new promises and new potentials, and and, and it was like, uh, yes, yes, it's there for you. Just reach out and receive it. So the roses are always real special to me. Thank you for sharing that, Unjun. Uh, let's see, Allison, yes. Um, yeah, I have a question and then just an, ob an observation. The question is, um, I think uh, this is just so fascinating and, and, and timely. Um, in this new process with the embryos, um, I see the role the childbearing age women will hold and the role that the um, non-childbearing age women will hold. How, what role will the um, men who have incarnated, the, those that have incarnated as men play in this yeah. process? I actually left that out. I meant to say that. And that uh, I don't know all of it but <coughs> at this moment, but what I did receive was that actually um, when, when I was talking about people can receive this um, energy, these codes, even if they're not going to have a baby, you know, they can receive the codes and it spreads out through the paragenetic field. Excuse me just a second. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and as it does so, also men, whether they've come into the dream, when they've come into the dream state, <coughs> I'm sorry, of these fields, they can receive it within as well. So actually, it's in their sperm, and these codes are. Now, it's not the same as having an embryo, but, but it does translate these frequencies uh, that way, but also males that are not planning on being that way for now, they can also go out into the stream, you know, they can stream it out through their, through their auras and through their energy fields, uh, you know, without the, the sexual part to it. It, it. See, it's so diverse. This is so diverse. I probably... There's a, probably other ways I haven't even thought of yet uh, that have come through, but it can be spread out in these many different ways. So yes, definitely men will be receiving it. And the more they receive it, the more their flowering heart is going to be opening and, and aiding this whole program. Because without the male vibration, the male vibration spreads things. It opens it up, the few, you know, and without that male vibration to spread it through the matrix, it would not get very far. So, uh, you know, that's a really important part of it all. I'm, I'm going to have to turn on my fan. I wish I didn't. I hope it doesn't make too much of a noise, but I'm, this is Hawaii, and the, it's the heat's on at the moment. So here we go. I hope it doesn't bother anybody. Uh, did that you had did that answer you? Yeah, actually, yeah, it was you know wonderful. It just it opens up more inquiry, you know, and so I'm getting the the vibrate like getting what you're telling me. Yeah, it's just I just need to like be with it um, and let it grow and flower of um, what that looks like. But thank you. Mm. And the other thing I was very taken with this gathering of the moon tribes. Um, because one thing that I noticed with the women gathering to go to Scotland, the strongest aspect that they have in common is their de desire to come together and be with each other differently than they have ever been in circle with before mm -hmm. with women. Uh -huh. um, there is this incredible like longing in the heart of knowing that a new way is being ushered in. And um, so any more information you have about that, you know, I'd love to plug in on that because I know it's not just for women this new way, but I think it's coming through as the feminine being generator. Yes. Um, well, the women have to find that place in themselves before they can really offer that place to men, you know, to open right. the doors to them fully as it needs to be. And I'm really looking at doing some Zoom casts on that subject. I think that would be, you know, in and of itself to go into the whole moon tribe thing and, and what that really means and expand upon it. I think that would make a good, 
Uh, yeah, I've just been seeing it and like my pulse is on it. I've been, yeah. you know, yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Pamela? Oh, can't hear you, Pam. Okay. Can you there. hear me? Yeah. Okay. Hi, I thank you all for your, your, your amazing statements. Also, Maya, this, is, this really lights me up, the whole aspect of these uh, embryo, storm embryo creations and, um, and what Allison is speaking about also. Um, one of the things that immediately came to me and I, and I, I felt was uh, through other works that I have studied and participated in was with using the, um, you, the a woman's, her, um, her uh, womb space, of course, most of us know this and our hearts, but Allison was commenting on the actual aspect of men and how they can do that also. I mean, be, if, you're if you're actively menstruating and all that, that's one thing, but when you're not, Mm -hmm. connecting with those two hearts, both of the hearts, the womb and the heart. We have two hearts, yes. you know, and, and the man bringing that energy up to their heart and through their throat. So for women, I was taught it's, it's the womb connecting with the heart and then the throat because it's so important. And it's really interesting what I just got in listening to you is you look at the womb and the aspect of it going down energetically to you know and out and then you look at the heart going up to our throats and out and i just saw this whole dynamic linking with the you know linking that aspect physically with the area packs also well what you're yeah. describing Phil talks about the women see in the heart there's two poles in the male and there's three poles in the female in the heart so that's what you're describing there. And that's something we get into on this next, when we do this. Hey. this whole thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 The only other, and the only other question I had was in regards to the Alexis Mundi activations in different places. Yes. Yes. And I, I was curious when you said this before, when you say going to different places, do you mean places where the skull hosts or, or, or origins are, or where specifically? No, anybody, you don't have to even be, you know, it's great if you're, a, if you're a host of the skull and you take one with you, that's a bonus, you know? But anybody, anybody could go to, and you could go to Central Park if you were in New York, you know, and you had this very special place in Central Park that grew you, you could go there and do it. Like for you, Pamela, that fantastic place that you go to all the time, you know, with those. Oh, I, I know a new one right now. There's a huge, 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 huge rock that I know that I've, that's been, that's out there. I'll, I'll go out there. I know where I'm going to go. <laughs> we can't have enough of these portals. I mean, if we're not talking about creating some, you know, huge star portal. What we're doing is talking about inserting an energy vortex that links, that associates with these places. In other words, if you went out your spot, Pam, one of your favorite places, and you activated it there, what you would be doing is you would be activating something that would automatically do a, a search, a Google search, a search, and find the portals that resonated with that point on the planet. You could be connecting to Kalanish. You could be connecting to uh Giza, you could be connecting and you wouldn't even know it maybe but you know this thing would say okay what are the portals that they're you know and it and it centers it and brings it into the connection and that way what's gonna hi bill that way it's gonna be like we're all going to uh have these so linked up together that <clears throat> You know, somebody like me, an armchair person says, oh, gee, I would really like to be right now. I would really, really like to be at, uh, you know, Stonehenge, you know, and experience the energies of Stonehenge. Well, uh, by the time we finish doing a lot of this, not finish, but doing, we could literally, uh, you know, I could connect to the aerial packs that I'd created in my body to an area packs that was close to me on this island that would then just signal me over to there. Now you'd say, well, why do you even need to do that? Well, you really don't, you know, you can go into your higher etheric, but not everybody can do that that easily. I can't, I can't connect that easily to say, oh, I'm there. I'm at the great pyramid right now. No, it's, it's difficult for me. I can see visions. I can get information. I can have moments, you know, these little moments, but what we're looking at is establishing something so that people can really, really have experience because they've got the portal within them and they've got relay stations 
at different locations, or they could even, I could get up out of my chair and go to one of these relay stations here on the island and feel the energies of all these different portals. So that's the kind of thing we're looking at there. Of course, there's other things that the Aeropax is doing with Alexis Mundi as well, uh, bigger programs of light. Let's say you do go to the Great Pyramid and you do an Aeropax there. Oh my gosh, what are you doing then? Well, you're establishing, then it's gonna do a search from that point, and what's it gonna search for? It's gonna search for Orion, the Pleiades, it's going to search for those places, you see, because it's a major portal. So you just keep building and building and, and until it's all so connected. It really is connected, but I'm talking about in our linear reality, in our spectrum of receipt, in our hologram, it will become so connected that even people that are just beginning on this path will be able to receive on a much deeper level. That's my picture of it anyway. Uh, let's see. Let's get somebody who hasn't talked yet. Uh, Joanna? Yes? Can't hear you, sweetie. There you go. Sorry, I'm just unmuting. Hi, everybody. And Maya, thank you for sharing everything that you've shared so far. I am just so excited. Um, the more we dig deeper into this, the more every cell in my body is vibrating. Um, there were so many things that were flying in and out as you were speaking. The first thing that sprung to mind was the Amstra molecule. And how does that play um, within this seeding? Oh, yes. How could I forget the Amstra molecule? I have spoken about it in some of my other videos, but uh, it is the port. It, it's, it's the little port that connects everything in the body to the whole um, uh, metatronic reality to the U.S. star to world systems to 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 pure gem bodies everything and you see that's why and I have to go back to this for just a moment because it makes such sense to understand the importance of it and that is why we have all these other beings that are doing you know grabbing people in the night and creating babies out of them and taking sperm and taking samples, little scoops and whatever. They're trying to get to the Amstra molecule. What they want to do is recreate it because they can't get there from here without it. And they don't seem to have the cognizance of how to create it through, through opening up to the spiritual program of, of light. And that's a whole other topic. So I'm not going to go there, but just mention that because of the importance Mm -hmm. the importance of the Amster molecule. And so when we're going into dream time, let's say to the Isle of the Sun, to, to the, into the Osiri Corpus program of light, all of us, whomever we are, male, female, old, young, childbearing, and non, or I say childbearing, maybe you're childbearing, but you don't want any more children. Well, that's okay too. You can, you can stipulate that. <laughs> you, know, you can stipulate that and still be a part of it. But no matter who we are going into this scene, uh, we're there, it's the Amstra molecule that allows us to receive this. And because the universe, the whole, the whole spiritual beingness that we're a part of is not going to keep people out. Uh, these beings that don't have the molecule, they don't have it for very specific reasons. So they need to do some, uh, uh, you know, so look at that, those specific reasons, and get those decks in order before they can open up to receive what we're receiving. It's not that we're just saying you can't come in. It's what they did to themselves that got them there. They've got to redo, you know, they've got work to do, a lot more work than we have, actually. Mm -hmm. They may be able to walk through walls and float people up to their spaceships and do all of that. And we think, wow, they're so advanced, but they're only advanced technologically. That Those things are easy to do, <laughs> so to speak. Um, but, you know, working with the heart cognizance and coherency, that's where it's at. And they can't, it, it both said one time, it's like, it's like uh, being all dressed up with no place to go. That's kind of how they are because they've got all these fancy bells and whistles, but they can't leave the artronic spectrum. So, yeah, it's really, really important. I'm sure we could do probably a whole Zoom cast on just that one topic, but it's important. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Uh, Tricia, I believe you've been trying to get in for a while. Did you have something there? I, before I forgot, um, it was drawn to my attention this past week by a friend of mine that, and this has to do with men, um, that there are some men, not all men, a few men, and it's, it's growing, who have learned how to I don't know how. It's just that through their sperm, 
and through their beingness, but mostly through their sperm, they have learned to concentrate this really great healing energy. Ah. And when they share that uh-huh. with different women, specific yeah. women, yeah. they are able to heal them. And I was like, you're kidding me. And, he, and this person said, no, I'm not kidding you. This, this is fat. Um, Cause he has received feedback from others. Mm-hmm. Saying, you cured me. How did you do that? Yeah. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. And certainly totally, amazing. totally true. I mean, I believe, I believe it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, there's the, the uh, what, what came up, uh, uh, Allison, remember about the Grail Knights, the, the men with the flowering hearts that were already present in that energy. And, you know, that was a whole another aspect of it. I can't even remember all the details right now. But see, it's coming forth in various ways um, through the whole male energy. Who, who have we not heard from that would like to say something here? Uh, Kailasa. Well, uh, I have three questions. Uh-huh. The first question is, uh, is there any connection between this new race and uh, what you talk about? I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I, read it, I read about it in Bill's materials, but he's quoting you somehow. And you speak about root races. And you say something um, like at, at the at the time in which Atlantis fell, and and through through the Essenes or something like that, a new root race was created, and then Merlin has had something to do with the creation of a new root race. So th- that that concept came came to my mind when you were talking about this this new race. Is it somehow related? I think that it is. It, it, that's a that's a really good question. And as you're saying it, I'm receiving it. It is a new root race. But but Thoth, uh, Thoth showed me a picture just now. And he said, instead of the roots going down to the earth, they're going up to the sky this time. It's a root race, but it's, it's, it's connected this way rather than this way. See, So uh, it's a race that carries us up and not brings us. See, the root race is before connected us to the earth deeply so that we could experience the the properties of our alignment with um that what we call physicality in this realm so we could become uh we could have some kind of a a program of of cohesiveness and that's where the bloodlines come in the root races the bloodlines you know because we've got to follow the blood path to get there and, and we connect with this blood race and that blood race and then we had all the problems where everybody said well i don't know about your blood race mine's the, you know <laughs> we had all that stuff going on and we just got so discombobulated with it all it meant, it meant well but it just got scattered so now this root race this root race is like this it's the cup it's like the Grail Cup. It still has a connection to the earth, obviously, but it's the 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 branches are in the earth. The branches are, are bringing all these branches together to form this new root, and the root is into the new, you know, new Earth star, you know, which is the more celestial realm. Well, uh, now that you that you mentioned that uh, that the new race, uh, the new root race has a new quality, I am remembering a meditation I did in the Mayan region in a not so famous city, very close to Chichen Itza, that it's called Ekbalam. The meaning of Ekbalam is black jaguar. That is the, the meaning in Mayan, uh-huh. and I was with a crystal skull. It was not the 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 host that I that I guard. It was another crystal skull, which you later said was another host, and uh, that skull took us into 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 seeing like several several scenes or several things that had occurred in that Mayan city in the past, and. During this meditation, what we discovered is that the Mayans, they wanted to create uh, some sort of a perfect race on Earth. That they had some grail program going on in the Mayan region. 
and Chichen Itza, Uxmal, and other Mayan cities were part of that Grail program because they wanted to create this race of supermen and superwomen, but they eventually realized that they couldn't uh, remain attached to the concept of blood. And that's when their whole civilization uh, broke down or, 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 or a lot of wars occurred among them. And uh, you, you could maybe see, you could maybe consider that a failure. But now that you're saying this, I think that the Mayans finally realized that we cannot longer live attached to physicality, you know? Yeah. Or concept of, of blood. Uh, very quickly, another, another question that I have is, how does this, uh, the creation of this new, new island, how does this uh, connect to the, to, to the event of August? You said that like a new energy was coming mm -hmm. from August 13 to the 22nd, something like that. Yeah, yeah, that, a lot of things are happening during that time. And that, those days... Are they, are they two separate events? Or they are they're the all, same. They're all connected. They're, they're, they're separate in the sense that they have their own, you know, little thing going on. But it's it's all connected, you know. And the, we have the king and the queen waveforms coming together. We have the, the creation of the aisle and the, the program of light with that. And even though Alexis Mundi is part of what we're doing, it's, it's like really taken off during that period. There's a lot of things going on. And the actual dates, usually I get the dates from Thoth. This time, I wasn't getting any date. And all of a sudden, I was looking on Facebook through stuff, you know, like we do, da 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 And I saw an article by Patricia Robo. I can never say your last name. Go. Yeah, yeah, that one. And um, I, I, usually, I like her work, and I usually stop and look at it. But no, I'm too busy. Oh, I, I, have, I have to hurry. And all of a sudden, it went, no, no, look at that. Open it. And I did, and she gave the date. So she has something going on. And I didn't, don't even remember what it is now, but it's like, that's the, the window, you know, the same window that's what we're doing. So it's obviously a big window, and I bet a lot of things are going on during that time. And so we're in it right now, and, and so we're in it. <laughs> Maya, uh, my last question. Is there any symbol we can use uh, to connect to this new island through yeah, meditation? Yeah, the, the one I just created. And uh, I'm going to... Okay. I'll be putting it in the portal for portal members. I might also uh, put a less uh, high res version or something, make it at least so people can see it somewhere. But for portal members, they'll have it in a high res version. So okay. you can get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm sure That's there are other images we could use. I might be creating others as we go on with all of this. I'm sure I will. But that's the one that came to me for now. Okay. Thank you. We're going over time, but I'm going to go over time. If you're all just sitting here talking, we'll just talk a little longer. People watching this video, if they don't have time to watch it all in one shot, they can watch it in two parts. <laughs> okay, Tricia. This has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but I just wanted to share. Pamela, you have the most exquisite background of everybody on my screen. Oh, gosh, Thank you. Doesn't she know? Like a little stage setting. <laughs> And she's sitting there in that blue with that pretty blonde hair. It's so pretty. It's my, it's the orchids. It ain't me behind me. That's the ah. energy coming from. <laughs> right. Oh, there she is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, yes, uh, 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 Sylvia. <laughs> yes, Sylvia. My, hi. Hi. My internet is a little unstable, but what keeps coming to my mind, talking about all of this, and I think that I posted on Facebook in the comments, uh, is a vision that I had about this uh, galactic baby being born from the Mother Earth. It was an amazing thing. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. And this new sitting, is this all related to uh, the star seeds and hybrids that we so much hear and talk about and yeah, we that's, feel connected to. That's a good uh, thing to bring up because also uh, Cece couldn't make it today. She really wanted to be on, but she's really involved yeah. in the, the whole uh, hybrid star seed programs and things. And um, this is a way 
that uh, people are bringing through some of these energies and dynamics at this time. It's a little helter skelter at this point. That is, you know, it doesn't have a defined referencing. It's kind of like they're off doing this and these are doing here and, and maybe some people are not even doing it, but they think they are. And, and, and um, I've read some things that are pretty um, convoluted around it and other things that are very clear and together. And I feel, you know, resonate. Uh, so all I can say is that's going on. And I think that, that that's a, that's a fringe element that's trying to connect. I don't say that in a negative way. When I say fringe, I mean, it's, you know, it's on the edge. It's trying to connect and get with the program and some of it is, and some of it isn't. Uh, but I believe that when we get this going, I say, we, the them get this whole thing, this new, this or Siri, uh, corpus going, it's going to bring all that into cohesion and, 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 and more awareness and understanding of what's really going on. I mean, somebody posted somewhere, oh, well, I'm going to be birthing a lizard, you know, and I'm going, <laughs> you know, so there's some of that going on. And then there's some others that are beautiful, you know, make me cry, you know, that's so beautiful. So it, it has to do with bringing things together. And people have, you know, their realities have to come into alignment with the, the true awareness. And, um, I think that they will. Uh, let's see. I believe Cindy put her hand up first. Yes, Cindy. I feel like it's cool. Okay. Well, you answered my question about the one thing. But, okay, this is with the aerial packs, okay? Are we activating ancient pyramids? And I'll just give you what happened to me in a meditation is that one minute I'm here and the next minute I'm in Atlantis with pyramids and they're becoming active. Uh-huh. Well, yeah. what we're doing is we're bringing the awareness of, of the activational points in the pyramidus radius. See, okay, Every, let's say you're standing there somewhere and you're activating an area of max energy. Well, it's detecting all the points that relate to it in the place that you're activating it. This is speaking of one outside your body in, in, in a position, but of course it's working with you internally. When it's doing that, it's uh, pinging off of the pyramidus radius nodal frequencies, which allow it to zoom right into these other points on, on the matrix. So when you say activating a pyramid, it, yeah. it, it, can, it can activate certain levels, frequencies of the pyramid, not the whole shebang, but okay. points yeah. relate to the aeropact's point that you're working with where you are. And if you were at the Great Pyramid and doing it, it's going to be signaling points that are connected to the universal all that that portal connects with. However, there's safeguards on it because, you know, what can I say? I mean, we can make mistakes. We're, we're, we're doing this the best we can, but, you know, we maybe we had uh, something in our field that wasn't quite uh, resonant with it all, you know, now, when yeah. I do things in my field, I don't want to take into a portal with me. And uh, so it's going to shunt that out. It's going to, you know, or maybe it's just going to cut it, close it down for that day because it's, it's not an appropriate moment. See, that's what the pyramidus radius is about. It, it's uh, helping to um, um, keep it in order, you know, so that we can't make mistakes and put things in that shouldn't be there. Uh, gotcha. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Let's see. Someone else was. Yes, Joanna. Muting. Hi. Sorry. Um, also connected. Um, my question is other than the aerial packs and the Merkaba or the Star of David, are there any other specific geometries involved in this? Oh, I'm sure there are, Joanna. There's just tons of them, <laughs> but I don't know what they are at this moment. I just know that, that um, you know, well, we have the, all the eyes, you know, the eye of Ra, the, the area packs is called the Isis eye. <laughs> I mean, that's yes. what she gives me. And so, you know, there's, there's different eye formations. There's all kinds of things. If we chime Bill in, which we're not going to do right now, Bill, but if we did, I'm sure he could tell you about six, seven, eight that he has in mind at this moment that, that line up with this. So there's, there's got to be many different geometries. I mean, when I told you I saw the persons with the, the light tattoos going, all these geometries were flashing, all these different ones. 
So there's, you know, it's a nesting within, within, within. What he's given us here is the, the opening, you know, the place, the central node that we connect to that opens this. So you might be working with it and start getting all these incredible geometries coming out of it, you know. The one that springs to mind immediately is the Rosa Mystica. Oh, yes. yes. Um, and doubling it, so from 72 to 144, and then exponentially outwards. Oh, that, when you said that, I just got two. I got chicken skin, as they say in Hawaii. Mm. Um, yes, I believe that that's absolutely true. In fact, we should, I'm going to look into that. <laughs> but on my own uh, portfolio, I'm going to look into that and see what, mm. what I get. Because when you said that, yes, absolutely. That fits perfectly into it. And, of course, it's a rose. We go back to the rose energy that... Uh, uh, who is, oh, Unjun, you were talking about that. Yeah, yeah. That's a good thing to bring up. I don't have a lot of, to say about it at this moment, but when you said it, I can see that it absolutely fits. I've seen it just very briefly, um, maybe two years ago, and it flashed through, and I didn't understand it at the time, but it was when this project was starting, when you started creating the Osiris Rising project. And as you began to um, explain certain things and bring more Thothic intelligence, mm -hmm. that the geometries that, I've be that I saw then started to make sense. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, that's really interesting. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. And thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, Tricia. This is a message from Sandy. She crashed, but she wanted everyone to say that she saw almost everything. Oh. And bye. <laughs> okay, bless her heart. Okay, yeah, I didn't even notice we had so much going on here. All right, uh, Edie. Edie. Uh, it seems to me that the most important thing um, that we can do right now is this area pact activation. And so, my, you know, as far as doing something. So do you have one um, link that if I wanted to share this or where it's concisely, what is the name of the link that you have this uh, the video or whatever? What is the best one for this? The best one for what, what, what are you the Aerial saying? pact activation that you're talking about going to different places and using oh, that. I, well, I have it. That just came through now. <laughs> That's how I don't have any. I wonder I can't think of it. Yeah, no, I oh. just, you guys were asking questions. I mean, sometimes I don't have it written down already, sometimes. And that was one of it, just, you know, like when somebody asked about the roots of the tree, I just saw it, you know, I saw the, the root race, you know, the Kailatha, I just saw it, you know. So I don't have it yet. It's, it's on here, and I may want oh. something in addition, but uh, I probably will. But this would be good. That'd be good. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Allison? Uh, two things. One is, um, and, and thank you, Edie, for bringing that up, because I'd love to know more about this, too. Somewhere you had mentioned um, where a group of 16 or more, the process will be more powerful. And I can't remember where that was, but I'll look and and shared if I see that. No, the original material that I received way back, whenever it was, in uh, the early 1990s, I guess, uh, had to do with the, the number 16 and how if we had 16 people together, it shifted it into a whole other frequency. That's a good thing to bring up. <clears throat> and the frequency is one of, I've forgotten, I have it in the material, uh, the original material, and it's on the Elixis Mundi uh, page on, on Osiris Arising, you can find it under study material, and that's the original, it's in a PDF file, and it, it gives about the 16 and uh, coming together. But essentially, it's creating a huge love harmonic is what it's doing. A love wow. harmonic, it's just massive, you know, like a love burst. <laughs> the other thing I wanted to mention about the Aeropax, <clears throat> and just put it out there and to see if it's like way out in left field, but every time I see it, I think of, like, I see an imploded rhombus, you know, like, if you look at it, it's like, you know, a rhombus turned outwards, but also this way. It is, yeah, very much so. I agree. Mm -hmm. Pamela? I, I just thought of something that I have to share with you guys and what I'm going to try to, it's actually called, somebody might have heard of this before, it's, uh, and I might have mentioned it to you, Maya, it's the activation of the Mahatma light body and it was written by a woman called C. Fitzgerald, Caroline Fitzgerald, some time ago and 
from the United Kingdom and I couldn't find it online. I was looking for this paper for so long and I found it recently. And it has to do with the two triangles, tip to tip, like an X and the activation of the light body. And I always found it very interesting and I kept this thing stashed and I just found it recently. I was like, I know it's in a book somewhere, you know? So I'm gonna try to scan this and put it on um, the Sholar sisters. I would love site. to do that. Yeah. Send it to you, and you can do whatever you want with it because I just thought it was. A ver it's very beautiful. It's very beautiful. And I'd love to share it with you. I, did you try googling it, Mahatma Light Body? I did. I couldn't find it. I I did try to find it online, and I couldn't find it anymore. I found some other things by this person. But uh, actually, she seems like she was, uh, you know, some got this information in whatever way she did for connecting with her eye. It's from, um, oh, God, I just thought it was, let me see, Kuan Yin. I channeled from Kuan Yin. This, she said, in April 97, I channeled from Kuan Yin, the symbol of the Mahatma energy, the diamond in the lotus. It's very relevant to what, to this. And so, yes, like I, and I found this back in some time a long time ago and traipsed it around. But so I just got excited, just got, where is that paper? And I'll, I will get it to you. Okay, thank you, thank you. You can even put it like in a PDF and send it to me. Yeah, I'll try to scan it in and do it. Okay. Okay, anyone else? Yes, Tricia. I just remembered a question that I had earlier. We're right smack dab in the middle of the photon light right now. And I wanted to know what the connection is of that to all of this, because I get that there is a connection. Oh, there would just absolutely have to be. We're, we're in the middle of, what? The, tell me what we're in the middle of again. The photon light. The photon. Oh, so we're going through the belt right now? We're right in it. We're in the middle of it. And, and it's like something we cycle in and out of. No. We've never been here before. Ah, okay. Well, I thought that was the case, but then when you said it, I thought maybe it's something about it I didn't know. Um, oh, yeah. Well, obviously, there is a connection. Let me just take a moment and see. Um, well, he's saying basically that's the battery that we're using to bring in all of these things and to activate them. It's the it's the the photon belt is the battery. He's saying it's it's trans it's a transducer. I'm not sure what I know heard the word, but I'm not sure. Transducer for um, allowing the light that they are raying into the pyramidus radius to become integrated with the spectral reality of this realm of this hologram. Uh, they need a lot of photonic energy to do that. That's Transducer is, it steps down, it steps down the energy and it also steps up the energy depending on where you are. Okay, well that fits then, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. okay, well thank you. Let's see what time it is. Um, okay, it's 10, 10, 19. We'll start wrapping it up, but is, is there any last thing if anybody would like to contribute or say your questions we can take it to 10 30 is what i'm saying so if you want to uh is there any last thing yes Onjo? okay about the working with the different sacred geometries and sometimes i just have a hard time because i also work i have been working with so many different geometries and my, you also shared with so many. So sometimes in my mind, I try to figure out, okay, how is it going to work with this now? But, you know, I just really, at, at this morning, I had a, just really amazing vision of myself was just completely crystalline being with so many, just it's completely crystalline, <laughs> a lot of lights. And so all the geometries that we have been, I mean, I have been working with, they exist in a perfectly, situated in a different dimension. So I don't have to figure it out with my head. <laughs> so I just had to let go of because uh, whether we are working with the aerial packs or we are or Star of David, it's just, they have their own intelligence how to work with our many different multidimensional bodies. So I don't have to figure it out too much. So it's like, okay, I'll relax. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And you, not, you know, you don't even have to look at the symbol that I made or, I mean, I just did that. So, you know, to sort of starting point if you want it. But, uh, yeah. 
it has its intelligence and you know maybe just for a moment you sort of picture for like half a second and then you know it, you just ask the being to take over from there and it might be building it might be opening up other ge geometrias inside it that you start seeing you know uh, who knows or maybe you don't see anything maybe you just feel it uh, you're very right it has its own intelligence that's a good way of putting it thank you Anjun <coughs> Are we are we concluded now? Do you think we've, we? Whoop 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 whoop! Yeah, just uh, just just another thing. You you mentioned in one of your channelings a few a few days ago or a few weeks ago that uh, seven Atlantean temples could be reactivated. Again, is this connected to to what is happening right now? I said that. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I swear to you. You said that that there there would be uh, that these temples, uh, ha well, the, the 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 light codes of these temples had been kept in Ruta, and that Ruta had oh, ascended yeah. to another dimension. But now, with the events that were going on, that we would have access to those yeah. codes again. That, that was a video that was made a while, just a little while ago, so it was out of my little short-term memory spectrum. Um, yes, that's, that's very true. Uh, the pyramids are going off all the time on this planet now. I mean, they're starting, they're activating, they're coming down from higher levels, but the ones from Ruta, see, Ruta is a whole other subject. Man, we could just spend two hours on Ruta alone and, and what's going on there, and I'd really like to do that sometime. So I'm going to have to make notes. You guys are bringing up things that, oh, yeah, I'd like to talk about that, you know, but but because Ruta is the, an ascended reality state of Atlantis, the part that didn't go down but went up, and it's a... It, it's where Thoth calls the northern door is, which allows us access to uh, stabilizing and working with the whole metabolism, what does he call it, chromosomal frequency that comes to us from the eye of Ra, which is that uh, the eye of Ra really is the, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, it's like the, a black hole it's not a black hole it's something we haven't ever discovered yet but it it's in orion and it radiates through the entire universe and um so uh when the tear occurred in orion it literally tore the the, ca the cap off the eye of Ra. i'm having to speak symbolically because i can't imagine what it really is you know but it tore the cap off and so now we have this eye of Ra is exposed so that's when the telesakara was created as a lens over that so when, when uh, Ruta is right up next against it, and I, I'm speaking spatially here, which isn't correct, but you know, and it uh, holds the frequency of the eye of Ra for our planetary spectrum, um, which we need uh, for various reasons. So why was I talking? Oh, so that's why the Telesakara is so important in the, in the whole Isle of Ruta and all of that. So again, that's something we'd have to just do a whole session on, which we really should sometimes. But yeah, it's obviously connected, you know, all of that. Okay. Oh, everyone, uh, uh, Pam, you have, did, was you, were you waving a finger or something or were you just doing things? <laughs> no, I was probably scratching something. No, I, I, but I had, I'm glad that was mentioned, Isle of Ruda, because I had a really clear audience experience last time we were on about, you have to go to the Isle of Ruta. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so when you just said that, I just went, yay. <laughs> well, everyone, this has been delightful. I really, really enjoyed this. I'm hoping you have as well. And we're going to do more, more, more. <laughs> I'm on a roll. I'm just <laughs> pumping them out left and right now. <laughs> but it's fun, you know. It's what gives me life. I mean, it, it brings me back to life. Talk about healing. It's a very healing thing for me. Good. Thank you all for participating. It would not be the same without you, believe me. So, thank, thank you. you. And I will thank be putting this video up, you know, as usual, and announcing it and everything, so you guys will all get it, and, um, and everyone else can see it as well. So, much aloha. Oh, just as we're ending now, the rains are pouring where I am anyway. Oh. Started to cleanse the rains in the, in the rainforest. <laughs> 
Maya, if you would stay on just a minute, I can show you something uh, about the Zoom thing that might help, okay? Okay, I'll, I'll turn off the video. Let me turn off the video. Uh, Aloha, everybody. Hi. 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 Hi.